Yeah, look, I, th I mean, there's no doubt that the economy wave of hotels, not just in Australia but around the world, has, has uh, dominated the landscape over the last 10 years in terms of development. That's largely an answer to the low-cost carriers and the, the increased flight schedules around the world and, and the emerging middle class of travellers. And the Ibis brand hits that sweet spot. We did the mega brand strategy some two years ago and um, not surprisingly as a result of that performance we're seeing new wave development come out of the ground and uh, not since 2008 have we seen a new Ibis. Uh, developed and then we're starting to see more come online but this is certainly the first wave of that next generation which is uh, you quite rightly allude to it's it's a very dynamic fresh uh, contemporary product and uh, really hits the consumer's sweet spot. And uh, we're looking at where Aquil's growth in Australasia is at the moment. Its economy with Ibis and its luxury with Sofitel. New Zealand's a wave of Sofitel's coming in. There's probably more in Australia coming soon. Are they the two best segments for you going forward? Yeah, look, they seem to be uh, the, both sweet spots in terms of the luxury and upscale segment. We've got Sofitel growing at a fast pace, but Pullman um, outstripping uh, the growth of, of the market in general. Uh, it's a new brand and it's fastly become one of the fastest growing upscale brands in, in the Asia Pacific region. And yes, uh, the economy sector um, matches, it hits that mid market that is growing and that traveller that is now uh, travelling rapidly around uh, the Asia Pacific region. You'll have uh, probably almost all the hotels that were in the Mervac acquisition and under, under Accor brands by next year. And uh, what's the feedback been like from travellers? You obviously had a lot of corporate travellers that were with Mervac that have come across to Accor, and and uh, how have they liked it? Look, we took an approach where, which was quite respectful, to be honest. You know, they were the Mervac brands were great brands, and 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 as you're aware, we've um, we've maintained the Siebel brand because we think it's relevant for the Australian consumer. So, but we took a respectful approach. We integrated very slowly. We made sure that most importantly, the teams uh, within the Mervac team were respected and, and joined the Accor group. You know, our business starts with our employees, uh, and then uh, once we have that platform strong, which we took time to develop, we then moved on to the consumer and making sure that the consumer was well looked after. Once again, the brand changes were relevant to a specific hotel and uh, where it was needed and where it would in fact ha enhance the hotel. And on that basis, uh, it's improved the performance of the hotels. And then on top of that, uh, we've been able to add loyalty, which is the recognition for all our customers uh, that we can reward them. Look after them and maintain a level of service for them that they expect. So if I'm a business traveller and, I want to, and I'm going to Melbourne or Perth or even Singapore or, or Bangkok, why should I stay at an Ibis and, uh, and not go for a mid-scale or upscale hotel? Look, it depends on the reason for travel. You know, uh, you know, again in Australia, you know, we've got mid-tier markets, we've got uh, tier one corporate, tier two corporate, uh, we've got the travelling uh, corporate market, we've also got different tiers in, in, in leisure. We've got, you know, the long-stay leisure business, which is traditional business, well understood in the Australian market, but what's certainly emerging, emerging is the leisure commuter business which is travelling for events, sporting events and, and other reasons. So, you know, you choose, you know, we're finding some of our loyal Sofitel guests are staying in Ibis product when, in, uh, when relevant, you know, if it's near an airport location or they have a different reason for travel. So um, the multiplicity of, brand, of brands across all the star segments give, a, give us a competitive edge in terms of satisfying customers' needs. Now the, the, the term game change has been used around a fair bit the last few years, almost a bit of an overkill for it, but yeah. this is a game changer for you, isn't it? Yeah, look, it is. I, I, I mean, I think game change changer, you're right, is, is t overused. Uh, we look for significant step up constantly and uh, whenever we get to do something we expect to do it well, we expect to do it best in class and we expect to be next generation and this property certainly delivers that and uh, it'll, it'll fuel the development and thought of the, the next three, four, five properties that come online in the IBIS network. There's a few owners in Australia now that are keeping you on your toes, guys like Jerry Schwartz and James Hines that, that aren't sticking with one chain or one brand, no. they're really mixing it around. Keeping you on your toes? Yeah, look, I think, you know, that's a natural way, that's a natural investment strategy for those uh, owners. And I think, you know, everybody, what, whatever you do, you must stick to what you know. And if a, a multi-group strategy is the investor's strategy and they feel comfortable with that, we're happy to sit in that in that space. You know, we like to compete um, and, uh, you know, we like to be matched up against our competitors and we, uh, we're pretty confident. So, um, look, I think that's relevant to those investors and, uh, and sensible in some ways because it, it makes sure their risk is balanced. And uh, last but not least, a, a lot more announcements coming out this year from our core, especially on, on the eastern seaboard as well. Yeah. You, you obviously, you're very, very confident with Sydney going forward, aren't you? Look, I must say, if you look at our development pipeline and new build hotels, and you know we haven't had a wave of new build hotels such as this since the late 90s, um, our development pipeline actually is very well balanced across Australia. You'll see Western Australia and Perth represented. You'll see, you certainly see Adelaide well represented, uh, Melbourne, uh, but certainly you know Sydney will have uh, some new build developments in it. 
it well, all probably reflective of the size of the markets that they're in. So no more or less, and then Brisbane will be well represented as well. So look, the development cycle is largely focused on tier one cities at this stage. It hasn't pushed out into the regional areas, but there is very good supply of regional products. So, um, but we, you know, it's a fairly balanced approach, and whether that's by design or, or by luck, it's probably a little bit of both.